Okay, guys, we're back with five things we learned uh, in the game last night, Manchester United 3, uh, Newcastle 2. Guys, before we kick off this, guys, please make sure you click the like on the video. Thanks for all of you joining the community. You're welcome. We wanted to hit 10,000 subscribers and we wanted you guys to be part of it. But guess what? Just like Manchester United, we're going down the drain. But yes, okay. So uh, we, we uh, you know, United... One of the best performances United have in a very long time. It wasn't last night, but I think the two last games, United were very good on the ball. And there is a reason for that. It's not magic. It's not black magic. It's not African magic. It's just very simple. It's because of this guy, Ahmad, who has, um, well, it's not an individual thing. It's just a mentality switch. And you know what? If In football, if you have watched football, you see you don't have to have 11 players to have a good football team. You need to have... If you can have four players who are ready to manage a game, you, I mean, you are going to have a result. So I think one of the best things we had in these two games, again, uh, Arsenal and uh, now Newcastle, Arsenal, a game in which we wouldn't have lost. Go and watch my previous video about five things we learned, because I think we were the better side against Arsenal. Let's, let's face it, it's a fact. Is that we had players who were ready to keep the ball, not players who are hiding behind players like McTominay, not players who just want to run like, uh, you know, uh, Bruno Fernand, I'm sorry, uh, or Marcus Rashford, not players who play for themselves, who always want to cut the ball inside and, you know, just shoot, uh, just like Anthony. So, look, I think the problem with Manchester United this season is very simple to see. I mean, if you if you watch United games and you have some minimum knowledge in football, it's very easy to identify why United is not playing well. You don't pick the ball to the attacker, so what do you expect? You have people who are wingers in the old school way. The wingers are just there to cross balls into the nine, to feed the nine with op options. We don't do it. Marcus Rashford wants to be a star. He plays for the Marcus Rashford brand. You have all, I mean, I'm tired. I'm so happy that the season is coming to an end, uh, really. But yeah, guys, there's also uh, Eric Tenag, which I'm so happy for him that he won his last game at Old Trafford. His future is not clear. Personally, I've put my bets that he's going to stay for next season. Would you want Ten Hag to stay? This is when I see your maturity. I don't know if you how old you are. You're a kid. I've been watching Manchester United in the late eighties. I was a kid. Yes, I'm not. I'm not like. This. I mean, I was a kid, but I was watching United. I really loved the, the football club. Um, yeah, maybe not like now, but you know, you know what I mean. So I think Ten Hag is the guy for the team because I think he is invested in the club, and, and uh, you can see from this picture um, that these are players that Ten Hag has given a chance, uh, and uh, I think. Uh, that will be good news going forward. So the number two thing I want to talk about is our goalkeeper. I said yesterday on my match reaction that next season is a season for Onana. Look, I am a Cameroonian, just like Onana, right? Origin from Cameroon. If Onana next season is not only a Tenak season, it's also an Onana season. What do I mean by this? I mean, if Onana doesn't pop his game, focus, and stop giving... Stupid, you know, we have considered almost 10 goals, which is Onana's fault. I'm not even talking about the, the tactical fault, just because of his lack of distribution. Onana has an issue that, you know, that we call it the hot potato issue, where you just have the ball, you want to spin it somewhere, and the opponent speaks it. It might not be his fault, that, but when you cross, when you are a goalkeeper, you're giving up a long pass. It should, not, it, it should not go at the center of the pitch. There is something when I was playing football, they call lateral passing. You should never give lateral passing. You... Those long passes which you give directly from you, it has to go either to the attacker but not the midfield because if you get it wrong, there's a counter attack and your defenders are a bit tired, you know, they, they, they are tired and they can easily score us. That is, we have considered goals a lot from such injuries. You know, we had this with De Gea sometimes, but well, Onana was meant to be that goalkeeper with the feet, you know, very quick, very quick spring, in, uh, spring uh, to the, the out of his line. And there is an issue with Onana. I think he's so heavy. He's a Cameroonian. I'm a heavy guy. I'm, I'm not competing him with me, but I just mean we are food the way we eat. I know he's a senior pro, but he is heavy. And uh, he's heavy from the way, I mean, as a goalkeeper, he he falls very heavily. And uh, maybe his reading of the game isn't that good. What I'm trying to say is that next season will be a season for Onana. He might, he might next season might be his last season. You guys are talking about Eric Tenag. I see Onana because... I think fans, if Onana performs the way he performed this season, next season, fans will not run, their patience will run away from him. Another person we talked to is about is Bruno Fernandes, Captain Bruno. This is a guy which, you know, when I got the, the uh, I, got, I wrote, I read all these informations online uh, that 
Bruno Fernandez, United, my acceptance offer for Bruno Fernandez. I thought it was a joke, but I think that is a real thing. It is real. If, it's, if it wasn't real, Bruno wouldn't reply that if the club wants to keep me, I will stay. <laughs> I have played football. I have a lot of footballers. No, I have fathers of footballers. Olanga's father is someone I know <laughs> that plays um, uh, in the professional league. So I know the way it works. He wouldn't say directly, but he's, he has the right to say indirectly, which means United are clearly maybe not wanting to sell Bruno, but they might have already had an offer for Bruno. It would depend on them. Look, in regards to that, I'll do a short about in my opinion, but you know, every player has a price. If there is a plan, if there is a real plan of a good playmaker, then I wouldn't be against. You might call me stupid, but you have to be courage to move forward. Courageous, sorry, to move forward. Bruno Fernandes yesterday, the way he played, he's a player who has barely had injuries uh, in his career. I think the first time is just um, United. I think he didn't play the, I think Crystal Palace, against Crystal Palace. He had an injury, I think. And uh, he hasn't played that game. Uh, and also uh, Arsenal. He is one of the better players we have signed since the departure of Sir Alex Ferguson. You know, he, he is, it's not a mistake that he's a captain. You know, it's because he, is, he has the personality, the professionalism and... Uh, uh, yeah, so Bruno yesterday was very important. You can see the composure and there's something I said in my match reaction Yes, yesterday was I think Bruno if you notice the way he played yesterday Bruno Was retaining the ball not playing those crazy long passes just one no what I thought about potato just tipping the ball He was trying to control the game, which is very important tactically for you as a um, as a footballer or as a football team, you know, you need to have a tempo. He, he was controlling the tempo, that's the right word. And the guy who really helped Bruno control that tempo was this guy, Ahmad. So, because the way Ahmad plays, Ahmad, how many of you watch the way uh, Messi, Lionel Messi started his country, his career? Look, when you are a playmaker, you're a star player, you're an important player in the mix of any football club, the team plays to your rhythm. You dictate the game. I have seen something in Ama the way he plays. Right? He, he he will not be Messi. He will not be Maradona. He will be Ama in the sense that he will be a very good player, no matter where he plays, because he knows when to accelerate. He knows when to stop the ball. He knows when to give the pass. These are qualities that even in football schools we are taught, but not everybody can grasp. He is it's a talent. For you to do it for you to know how that's what when we, we talk a lot about managing games you see that in manchester city you see that with uh the midfielders in manchester city the way they play you see that with rodri the way they, they know how when to accelerate and when to kill this is something that mctominay doesn't have that's why when mctominay is playing as a midfielder we have a hole you need to know how to keep the ball so you, if you can keep the ball for 30 seconds just the way you keep the ball and i know i know how to keep and accelerate the game simultaneously you know Messi is very good at it. you know what I'm talking about I think Ahmad has he must play look this is what I'll say in regards to Ten Hag and Manchester United tell me what you think if Ten Hag doesn't start Ahmad in the finals of the cup I won't be sorry if he's sacked he should be sacked if Marcus Rashford starts yeah and, and Ahmad doesn't start Ten Hag has to be sacked some of you have come to the channel and say oh I'm supporting I'm a supporter of Ten Hag I want him to stay I really do. But if Ten Hag doesn't start Ahmad, Ahmad is someone which, I, you know, most of you have spoken about Ahmad, that he will have his time and he's going to play. And uh, because I, I, I'm not a supporter of players, I'm a supporter of the club and what I see, I might be wrong, but it's my opinion. If Ten Hag, being him the manager, doesn't start Ahmad uh, in the finals against Man City in a team that will control the game, and then we have a player who is very good on c controlling the ball, on the bench, then ten, every ten act must be sacked. I, w I mean, yes, you might say I'm going, I'm, I'm a bit uh, erratic, I'm, uh, you know, dramatic or whatever. I don't really care because this is not, uh, this is not fair. I know the world is in fair, but Ahmad is a player that he's in good form. He needs to have a lot of time and game and build that confidence, and he will be, he will be on fire if he builds the confidence and the season well. He comes next season, he will be given a chance no matter what players will sign. So I think Ahmad um, uh, is a player that we really need. Another player which I think uh, showed some mentality, this is what we see in football, 
was uh, Amrabad. I don't have his picture here. Amrabad was. Amrabad is a player which we've been talking about. The question is if Amrabad is has to be uh, uh, extend his his contract to be extended for another year. If we could just pay the ten million pounds in order to let him stay as a permanent as a team player, <sighs> that decision had to be made in January. Had to be made uh, past January. I think the decision already has been made that he should return. But I I was in charge of Manchester United for us to control. Don't forget we have to control our course. United does not have endless funds. United is not Manchester City. United the um the um, the Inos group came to United to, as an investment also, not just to throw money. So I think if we are bringing in one more midfielder, I think Amrabat should stay. Look, football is all about confidence. There's a period in the season where you win confidence, you lose confidence. At this period of time, if we can we go to, Brent, to uh, Brighton and get a result, even if it's a draw, I think the game in City will be difficult, even, even though I have already said before, that I think United is going to to lose the finals. If, uh, if for me, it's just a hundred percent we will. So I will um, keep. Uh, I will give Amrabat talk with Amrabat for two. Say these two games would will, will, will help us finalize a decision for you to stay. So talking about financing decision to stay and also about the courage. Rasmus Holland has gone the whole season. I think he has scored if not fourteen, maybe fifteen goals with an attack that has not fed him goals. See, 40% of Rasmus Holland goals are individual. Maybe 40%, it's maybe even more than that. I'm the one just calculating. I need to think. I can tell you guys six goals. I mean, just five goals, which um, I would, uh, Rasmus scored through his own initiative without being fed. You know, so I think this United, we need to be collective. I've been singing this song the whole season that United can never be competitive if we have Marcus Rashford and Bruno Fernandes. I will stick with it. Only, and for the two players, Bruno Fernandes is the only one that can adapt on playing in a system where we are, uh, where in a system where, where we can control the ball. I'm not sure if Marcus Rashford can because Rashford is all about him running like a headless chicken and scoring, which is his fault, which is his uh, fault, sorry. Anyway, guys, those are the more than the five things we learned in the game today. There is some breaking news about Bruno Fernandes uh, that, uh, and as I said already, that it is a very serious thing. There are clubs we are hearing today that Bayern Munich is interested in buying him as well. Manchester United will need to find a way to settle Bruno to 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 be at United next season, and uh, it will be tough. It will be tough. I think it's a. Uh, I think it's not as easy as we are talking here because uh, while he would love to still Manchester United. I think Champions League also is uh, and winning a trophy in Europe also is something that he is looking towards too. He might love to go to Germany and win the, the Bundesliga with Bayern Munich. Nobody knows. Anyway, guys, we'll be back again soon uh, with more videos. Please make sure you click the like on the video. If you learned something, guys, please subscribe to the channel. We'd love to get you. If I've, I'm not sure if I've earned your subscription, but do what? you know what, guys? I invested my money, did all this as a fan and uh, i'm doing it for my phone if you were somebody who loved football and you want to be part of it it's up to you i won't jump down the clip just because i wanted to be a subscribed to this to our community anyway guys uh yeah have a lovely day and talk to you soon we'll be doing a preview we'll be doing a lot of live contents in future when we must have hit a certain number that is worth going out and shooting a live videos because when you go on live and uh, you're just alone on the camera it's a bit not it's not the best thing to do yeah believe me anyway have a nice day and yeah talk to you soon bye bye